Well, welcome to session two, um, which is on stepped wedge designs, and that promises to be as exciting as the previous session. Um, my name is Rieke van der Graaf, and I uh, will introduce, very briefly introduce step wedge designs and issues raised um, in these designs and then the speakers. Um, as Charles already said, a step wedge trial is a form of a cluster randomized trial. So to one extent, the good news is there's nothing new to discuss, or is there? So that's, um, um, that's a challenging issue for this session. But a step wedge trial is a CRT crossover design in which clusters cross over in one direction only according to pre-specified time intervals. Um, and I think um, uh, there's one aspect that, that I wanted to uh, s uh, emphasize uh, particularly is that there are two types of, uh, of um, step wedge trial designs. And the one is a cohort form. Uh, and in that form, the same subjects within the clusters are being followed over time. So hence the crossover between treatments is then not only at a cluster level, but also at a subject level. And then there is the cross-sectional uh, form in which new subjects are being included after each step, which means that the crossover of treatments is only at a cluster level. And that's an important difference be between often it is thought that a step wedge design, which has some form of natural attractiveness because all, all clusters are being switched to the intervention and the idea is that all people or all clusters get the intervention, which is not the case if your um, step wedge trial design is in the form of a cross-sectional uh, step wedge uh, design. Um, so are there morally relevant differences between CRTs and SWCRTs? I think, and I've argued for that elsewhere, uh, that there are at least two differences, and that is on the clinical equipoise issue or the delayed rolled out, inter intervention, delayed rolled out of the intervention. And the second is on the social value of these designs, um, which um, relates to the question to what extent is this implementation or is this implementation research. Um, and briefly on equipoise and step wedge trial design. So the step wedge trial design can be used for several reasons and I think in the breakout and also during the discussions we, we will touch upon the issue to what extent the step wedge trial design is a uh, when it is justified but it is amongst others used in situation where an intervention under study has shown to be effective in more controlled settings or where there is a prior belief not, not so much knowledge but a belief that the intervention will do more good than harm. Um, so we can discuss to what extent um, uh, further research is justified in that case or whether aquapoise is being disturbed already from the start. So that's an important topic. And then related to that is, um, I think, the social value of step wedge designs. Um, you can have no evidence whatsoever um, about the effectiveness of an intervention and then typically statisticians will say you have to perform a conventional RCT or you can have sufficient evidence about the effectiveness of the intervention and then you can just implement the intervention but um, typically for an SVD to start, SWD to start, uh, more evidence is needed um, uh, so there is uh, more than one study has been performed and you also need more evidence to study the uh, effectiveness of the intervention. So the room for step wedge designs is between having sufficient evidence and uh, having some evidence. And the discussion is to what extent is the um, uh, step wedge trial design justified and having uh, uh, sufficient social value. So, uh, so the, the speakers will touch upon these issues in their um, in their um, sessions, um, in their talks. Um, and they will also talk upon other ethics issues uh, like gatekeeping, informed consent, identifying the research participants, and logistics and randomization. Um, so that was my brief uh, introduction of step wedge trial designs.